Thank you for your interest in Kapow software. In this video, I'll be demonstrating automating web content migration using Kapow Catalyst. This is a sample website that we'll be loading into Kapow's extraction browser. The extraction browser allows us to interact with and extract content from the website. We can extract visual components from the website, such as text or images, along with non-visual values such as metadata from the HTML, or properties from the browser such as the URL. The content of interest is selected visually and mapped into a structured data object with attributes that you define. This, this is an overview of Kapow's content migration process. Content is extracted directly from the website with Kapow's robots and stored into an intermediate database. Here, the content can be formatted, categorized, and transformed to match the content model and taxonomy in the target CMS. The content can be uploaded as XML by way of REST Web Services, SOAP Web Services, Sling Forms, or whatever custom API or standards-based API is provided by the CMS. Content can also be uploaded without using an API at all, simply by leveraging the user interface provided by the CMS's website. These are the steps to Kapow's content migration process. First, a database inventory of all the URLs that make up the site will be created. A robot will crawl the website and collect the URLs of all the HTML pages along with the URLs of all the resources such as images and other binary files. Next, we access each item in the inventory database table. The resource files are saved off and the HTML and other assets are parsed through to extract the content as structured data objects. We can then enrich and transform the content as needed for uploading it to the target CMS. Ne Next, I'll be showing the Kapow Catalyst visual design environment. We'll see how robots that define our workflow are built. We'll look at a robot that does a page inventory, a robot for extracting content, and finally, a robot that uploads content to the target CMS. Central to the Kapow Catalyst design environment is the extraction browser, which we've loaded our sample website into with the first step of our robot here that you can see up above. I can create additional steps in the robot simply by interacting with the content in the extraction browser. For example, I'll recreate the next step in the robot, the for each URL step. I'll simply select this step, delete it from the robot, and then recreate that step by selecting the site, expanding the scope to the entire page, right clicking on the page, selecting the type of step that I want to add. I want to add a loop a for each URL, and as I click on this, the step is added back into the robot above. I can now click on the for each URL step and watch the robot step through the site URL by URL. The next step in the robot will actually extract the value that we have selected on the page. So for example, you can see currently we have this text selected and the HTML down below, you can see the href value is faasafety.gov forward slash some content. So this step, extract URL, which is configured here, is going to extract that text value and store it into the inventory.url attribute. So as I click past that step, in real time, we can verify that the URL value has been populated here. The next step in the inventory robot is the is in domain logical step. This step checks if the current URL is within the domain that we're doing an inventory of. And as you can see visually here, this content is from the faasafety.gov website. It does not belong to the aopao.com site. So when I try to pass this step, Kapow Catalyst is going to let me know that we can't reach the next step because we did not pass that logical test. So we'll go to the next element in the loop and that value is extracted into the URL attribute. The value is aopao.com forward slash some content, and that does contain aopao. So we pass that logical test and move on to the next three tests. The next three steps in the robot check if the current href that we have selected is one of these CMS generated buttons. If it is, we don't want to add the URL to our inventory. In this case, it's not, so we can pass by these tests and continue to the next step where we get the content type of the query URL which happens to be an HTML page so that content type is going to be set down here in our inventory object when I pass the step. Now we have the content type and the URL in our inventory object. 
we can now try to load the page and verify that it's a valid link. Now that we've verified that the link is valid, we verified that the URL belongs to the domain, it's not a CMS generated button, we can finally store it into our inventory database. Once we've run through this step by step for a single page and verified that the workflow and the robot works as we want it to, we can then switch to debug mode and run the robot and watch the content extracted from the pages, each URL and each content type, page by page, just as it would at runtime. This is the first of two extraction robots. This one's fairly simple. There's no visual component. We're simply going to query the inventory database that we just created and find all of the URLs for the resource files, such as the PDF files, JPEGs, etc. We're going to save all those files to the local hard drive and then store the location back in our database. I'll switch to debug mode now and run the robot. And here we can see each URL, each file name, and each file size as it's saved off to the local hard drive and the file location is stored back to our database. The second extraction robot goes back to the inventory database and this time we're going to query for all of the HTML content. After the page is loaded, I'm going to select the main menu to determine the category of the content on this page. This is done with the find tag step. Here is where the find tag step is defined. We're going to look for active item within the tag. Here in the HTML below, you can see that the first item of the main menu is designated as the active item. When I click past this step, that menu item is found. When I click past that, we extract the text and store it as our category over here in our HTML content object. In the next step, we define an area within the page as an article. We're going to have a loop that goes through every article on the page and it finds the title of the article and that's mapped into our content object down here when I pass the step and the next attribute is the subtitle that's mapped into the content object and then the article date and as you notice the article date that was mapped into our object here is in a different format than you see here in the article that's done with this converter this is one of many converters provided in Kapow Catalyst. This particular converter does a pattern match on the date and converts it into the format that we want. There's also converters for other types of arithmetic functions and other text converters available. The next step extracts the author and then we extract the content of the article. And now that we've fully populated our content object, we're ready to store that object into the database. So, so we've gone through the robot step by step for one article on one page. This is exactly how you design a robot. You load one page that you know has a similar layout to many other pages. You select the content on the page, define it, and map it into your object, and then create the business rules to transform the content and format it exactly how you want to see it and store it in your database. Now we're going to run this in debug mode and allow the robot to run through all of the articles on the first page. When it gets to the final article, it'll load the next page, load all the articles on the next page, and if we have any issues with the layout on other pages, the debugger will let us know. I'll hit play. It runs through to the 16th article and stops us at extract subtitle. Here, I simply hit the go to button in the debugger. That brings us back to the Visual Design Studio where we can see that the 16th article doesn't have a subtitle. So this is the problem that we've hit and we can simply solve this by changing our robot now. We can add a branch to the robot where we handle this case in a different way or we can set a default value for the subtitle or we can simply handle it with error handling, say ignore and continue if it's not a required field. Now that we've made this quick change we can go back to the debugger and run it again. This time we go past the 16th article and we're going through all the pages. We're on the 14th, 15th, and 16th page. It's this rapid iterative design process that, that allows you to continuously fine tune your robot until you can extract all the content from all the pages as you visually verify that the content is formatted and structured to match the content model in your target CMS. In this final robot, 
we'll be uploading the images that we save to our local hard drive to SharePoint. We simply load SharePoint's website into our browser and navigate to the folder where we want to save the files to. At this point, if you are loading the files manually into SharePoint, you would enter the file name, you click OK, click the Commit button, and then click Check In. Instead, in this automated environment, the robot is going to query the database and get each resource file name, load it into the browser, click OK, Commit, and Check It In. As it does that, it's going to find the new URL of that file and save it back to our database. This will allow us to go through all of our content and do a find and replace between the old URLs and the new URLs and relink all of our content. I'll switch to debug mode now. We can run the robot. And here we see all of the files as they're checked into SharePoint. Here in our database, we can see that the new URL field is now fully populated so that we can go back to our HTML content, do a find and replace, and relink all of our content with the new correct links. Also in the database, we see these compile generated fields, first extracted, last extracted, extracted and last run, and last updated. These allow us to do our content migration with no content freeze. After the initial inventory and content migration run is completed, we run the inventory robot one final time. It will check the content on the live website and see if any content has been changed since it was last migrated. If so, the new content will be selectively re-migrated into the target CMS. Now let's look at migrating the article content that we stored in our database earlier. We're going to migrate this content into day CQ5 CMS. This is the content from our database. We have the title, subtitle, article date, author, content, and category. The first several steps of the robot simply log us into CQ5 so we can begin to upload content from the database. Our query database step is configured to select all the fields from our content HTML table and map them into the HTML content object attributes. We can see that the HTML attributes are currently all blank. As we pass the step, we can come back to our HTML content object and see that now the attributes have all been populated with the HTML content fields from the database. In our next step, we set these attribute values into our day form. Here we can see the first step is we get the day form template, which looks like this, and then we find and replace each of these values, the title value, the subtitle value, and the author value, so on, with all the attributes from the article. The result is then saved off into dayform.payload. As I pass by this step, we can now see the payload looks like this. So we fully populated our form template and we're now ready to post the form. In the next step, we actually post the form and we can get our verification that the content posted successfully. Here we can see the JCR content object and all of its attributes. In the next two steps, we keep our intermediate database fully informed by setting the new URL value that we have here back into our database and also the doc ID for this content object. Now that we've verified that the robot works as intended, we can switch to debug mode and run the robot for all the result sets from the database table. As it runs, we can see each of the fields being migrated into day CQ5. This concludes my demo of web content migration into SharePoint and day CQ5. If you'd like to see other sample content migrations into other CMSs, please contact Content Migration Sales at Kapow Software. Thank you.